Robin Shepard is um, <clears throat> the, uh, the original Let's Move uh, uh, executive director and is now a senior advisor with the uh, Bipartisan Policy Center and has uh, <coughs> been the driving force before get, uh, for us to get this physical literacy project off the ground. So have at it. Thanks, Tom. Good morning. I am happy to see everybody, and I'm really happy to be in D.C. with snow. Because I now, I was in D.C. for almost 20 years, and I live now in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. And we rejoice when there's powder. So um, going out of my house today, um, seeing snow made me very happy. And one thing that I realized moving to Steamboat, um, when I first moved there, uh, somebody asked me, what do you do? And my response was a typical Washington response. I said, well, I'm a consultant on obesity prevention and wellness. And they looked at me with quizzically, no, no, what do you do? And I was like, what? Like, well, do you snowboard? Do you ski? Do you snowshoe? And so I started realizing I'm living in a town where physical activity is really the norm. So everybody does something. I'm, I'm on the mountain and I see 80-year-old women going down on their skis singing, and I think, I want to stay here for life because people here are really active. So I, I propose that hopefully in Washington, D.C. and every place in America that when we ask, what do you do, it's really what do you do with your bodies, not what you do for your work. So let me get to physical literacy. So we're talking about physical literacy today, and hopefully, yes, what is physical literacy? So it's really an equation um, is the ability, confidence, and desire to be physically active for life. So we have talked about um, PE, we've talked about recess, we've talked about all these other issues, but physical literacy really is the goal. Um, and so let's, let's break it down. Um, so ability, I don't know if everybody can see the slide, so I'll read it to you. Ability refers to competency and basic movement skills and an overall fitness that allows individuals to engage in a variety of games and activities. So if you have the ability, then you want to do something. Then the other part is confidence. Is confidence is knowing that you have the ability to play sports or enjoy other physical activities. When you think about roadkill, they have confidence now that they can play. Maybe they didn't at the beginning, but they do now as a soccer team. And then obviously is desire. It's the intrinsic enthusiasm for physical activity, whether it's in a sport, it's playing on the playground, whatever it is, but having the desire. Um, for us in steamboats, it's, you know, when the powder comes, we have lots of desire. Um, so why, why are we talking about physical literacy? Tom talked about this, this table, and it's really the foundation. And so um, I talk to a lot of politicians in my work, uh, elected officials, and I talk to a lot of schools, and I ask about, you know, more recess, or I ask about um, how can we get more PE classes, and its principals often say to me, oh, we don't, we can't get more PE, we can't get recess because we got to do reading, we got to do writing, and we got to do arithmetic. And so the question I always ask is why can't we add a fourth R? I really haven't figured out how to make physical literacy like riddle, riddle or something, but uh, with an R, but um, is that our, we focus so much attention on our minds, how to write, how to read, how to do math, but we haven't focused enough attention on how to move our bodies. We can't do anything if we don't have a body. This is, as Nike would say, we're designed to move. Um, so we really want to, if people understand the concept that those things are important, that we need to be literate in reading, write, and math, why can't we also force or, or engage and really uh, build a movement to be physically literate. So that is something that we're trying to do. We have a working group at the Aspen Institute um, pursuing how do we get physical literacy embraced in the United States. And it is a concept that is um, very popular now in other countries, in Wales, Ireland, uh, Australia, Canada. And so we're learning from other countries and, and we hope that physical literacy will be embraced um, here. And one of the things I wanted to share with you is I, some of the work I do at the Bipartisan Policy Center is I work um, with the Department of Defense. And what I learned from uh, General Mark Hurtling, who ran 69 Army training bases, he told me that um, the 18 and 19 year olds that are joining the Army now are not physically literate. And the ramifications are, is that they have had to change the 10 weeks of Army basic training 
because they have so many injuries, because they have kids now that come in that don't know how to roll, that don't know how to fall. They don't know how to do any of those basic things that many of us learned as, as kids. And it's costing the Department of Defense millions of dollars in healthcare costs because of these injuries. And they've had to do remedial PE because they don't know how to do this. So um, you realize there's lots of ramifications. And as the Surgeon General said, you know, just because you don't have health in your name um, doesn't mean that you are not part of this process. Um, so it's, uh, everyone has a role to play, and um, it's really, really important. So I'm, I'm going to show you another slide, which is the kind of fundamental skills um, slide that um, is really the basic of physical literacy, that if you learn how to run, you can play soccer and basketball and volleyball and all those different things, or if you know how to throw or catch all the other sports you can do, but other things that you can play, you know, play with your dog or whatever it is. So these are the fundamental skills, and we have, I think we have some children here that can show us some fundamental skills. Would you guys want to come up, up here? so we can see what physical literacy is. Okay. Oh, we're getting some equipment too. <laughs> so what are your names? Uh, I'm Eli. Eli? I'm Eli. And I'm Miles. Miles. All right, so you're going to show them some stuff? Yeah. All right. Show us what you can do. Here, I can hold the mic when you do that. So you didn't start out doing that. <laughs> so, so what were the fundamental skills that you learned? You know, what, what, do, you, what do you like doing? Um, uh, I like vaulting. I just like, when I learn, I just like to, you know, practice basic stuff. Basic, and what's the basic stuff? Like, just like basic, just going over the object and making sure, you know, you get over it. So you learned how to jump first? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah I think that parkour is basically it. Uh, what we're doing. Uh, it's a simple way of pushing it, uh, urban gymnastics, and fast way to get to point A to point B. So, gotta run, jump, climb, things like all that. Those, all yeah. those pieces. And what's your favorite thing to do? Uh, I really like just trying to go as fast as I can over an obstacle or climbing something tall. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> so, I'm Imagine if every, every kid in, in America could do that. So thank you. So um, we'd like to bring up um, Indy Cowie, who does, can do it, do some other skills. Is she around here? I see, oh, I see her. So Indy Cowie is a um, champion freestyle soccer player. And she's going to show us some skills of uh, physical literacy as well. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, how did you learn that? <laughs> um, I actually played soccer since I was like four or five. Um, when I was 12, I saw the world champion do a little demo for me of the freestyle stuff, and I was like, that's what I want to do. 
So I just went in my back garden or the garage and watched YouTube videos and just kind of <laughs> got a little creative with it and it turned into this. And then being, being this physically active and physically literate, you know, what does that mean for you for your life? Um, the freestyle stuff is just, it's not, it's sport, but I, I call it a spart, which is kind of like a combination of sport and art. Um, cool. So it just helps me, like, creativity, um, stylistic-wise, and, like, other aspects of life. So not just being physically active, but it helps me, like, I guess be more creative with what I'm doing in life and think outside the box and just think differently about everything. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. So I don't know if we're all going to be able to do that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just going to leave you with um, uh, three thoughts. Is that one, remember the definition of physical literacy, that it's a ability, confidence, and desire, um, that everyone has a role to play. This is not just for schools to do, that after school programs, um, medical insurers, medical providers, um, every, everybody has a role to play in promoting physical literacy. And, um, and then really that um, to have fun. This is all about fun. Uh, sometimes we talk about so many things in Washington and we don't take the fun out of it. So um, thank you so much for listening about physical literacy and hopefully we'll have more to say um, in the coming months.